right so the video you guys voted for is our death is video the downfall of bully squads uh here is the uh the link to this video if you have not done so already make sure that you go over and you like this video you subscribe to the content creator because this is the official release so you should support it welcome to tuesday's installment i'd react with brand be sure to like comment and subscribe for more migraines migraines also there you go. come and visit the mr headache on twitch <laughs> thank you but also just as importantly make sure that you uh like and subscribe the original release of this video for you guys i just posted the link in the uh the chat over here for you guys on the youtube it'll be down in the description below because this content is not possible or is made possible by somebody else so you know you should support the official release of said video so yeah uh this is how the downfall of bully squads honestly I used to, you know, as somebody who made Killer for most of their career and only recently started playing 50-50, I used to, like, kind of always run into groups like this that were very, very uh, intense and kind of went out of their way to make me miserable. But I have noticed particularly that, like, specific, like, player groups that I used to run into all the time in Killer kind of just don't play the game anymore. Or I run into, like, only one of them and not, like, their whole group. Um, so I've definitely seen, uh, like, a, just a massive decrease in these kinds of, of squads. Um, so, uh, I'm interested to see how Ardetha, uh, covers this. Oh, yeah. Whatever your views are on the current state of DVD's balance, there is no denying that most things about the game are in a fairer place than they used to be. Of well, course, part, yeah. the game isn't perfect, but there's a lot less room for people to exploit certain mechanics for the sole purpose of bullying their opponents and ruining their day. Funnily enough though, if you were to ask an old school DVD player how they feel about the old days of the game, you'll get one of two drastically different answers. Yep. Either this game used to be absolutely miserable, it's a miracle this game even grew a player base, or DVD used to be so fun, it's a shame they nerfed all the fun stuff. What's the fun the stuff usually means like things I used to bully and abuse the game in order to make other people miserable. That's usually what people mean by the game used to be fun. It's like, I, there used to be a double window at Cowtree and they could never catch me. So now I'm just so, I was so good at the game and it, it, it was fun back then. And it was like, it was only fun because they could abuse something to make somebody else miserable. The person on the other end of that was having an awful time. So, yeah. Hey, Totos, how's it going? The reason for this? Find out after this message from today's sponsor, Opera GX. Hey, we Opera! You know that DVD is Opera. not the most optimized game out there, and you need to squeeze out every extra frame you can GPU, get. Geez. So when you're watching videos or your favorite streamers while playing, why use a browser that eats up all your resources when you can use Opera GX and the built-in GX control panel to limit yep, how much of thing. your CPU and RAM the browser can use, so your frame rate doesn't get bogged down when gaming. Or for those of you who struggle with slow internet, you can also limit how much bandwidth Opera GX uses, so mm -hmm. you can maintain a balance between watching streams and staying lag-free in your matches. Sick of getting flashbanged every time you open a site and wasting time scrolling through each individual site's settings to enable dark mode? Well, once again, Opera GX has oh, got you covered that with one's the ability weird. to force dark mode on force dark every single wonky, but yeah. page. And just when you thought it's they awful. had it all, there's also Discord and Twitch integrations built in into the browser too, so you can stay connected to all your servers <laughs> and never miss your favorite streamer with notifications whenever a streamer you follow goes live. And to top it all off, there's the GX Corner, an area curated by the Opera GX team to help you find all of the newest and best free games, I never amazing this price ever. deals, and gaming Literally news ever. all in one place. You can install Opera GX now with the link in the description or the pinned comment. Well, depending on what role that person played, Either of those previously mentioned statements could be true to an extent. One role got to experience a power trip unlike any other offered in a multiplayer game, but the other role was on the receiving end of yep, that. Like so I just said. let me tell you about the downfall of bully squads, what enabled them, what they were capable of, and the changes that eventually led to the extinction of a once feared playstyle. To start things off, let's talk about how bully squads actually operated. They were most often teams of three to four friends who would play together while on voice comms with the sole intention of trolling, harassing, and overall just ruining their opponent's yep. day. However, it was this would not be done by outplaying the killer or playing well to cause the frustration of defeat. In fact, quite the opposite. 
These squads would often straight up ignore their objectives, refuse to repair gens, and not even attempt to escape in favor of keeping the killer stuck in the match for as long as possible, mm -hmm. whilst absolutely tormenting Which is a them. huge for instance, point deficit as well. intentionally triggering glitches that would permanently stop the killer from being able to move, glitching out of bounds into spots where the killer could never possibly reach them, abusing infinite loops, and some of the many broken items, add-ons, and perks survivors had over the years. Let's start off with the core tactics of movement-based shenanigans. Even in those early days of the game, the community figured out looping pretty quickly. Yep. While your standard pallet looping and window looping- I bring this up every video, but that was not intended. The devs did not intend looping to be a thing in the game. The main thing you do as survivor, not apparently intended. And, it, and once you think about it, it kind of makes sense, kind of like the changes they're making to Survivor over time of just like, just sit on gens or just use your exhaustion perk to get away, not to actually loop. It's because that's how the game was originally designed. Wow. Wow. Thing was already commonplace. It was quite different to the way loops play out nowadays. This was due to a combination of a significantly slower pallet break speed and window vault speed for killers mm -hmm. alongside maps and the pallet spawning system being significantly different to how they are now. Mainly, maps were larger overall, there were significantly more pallets and windows, safer pallets in general, and survivors could straight up blink like the nurse with a mechanic called pallet yep, vacuum. which was stupid. Nowadays, if you're sprinting towards a pallet, you can press the drop button before you're at the pallet and the game will queue up the input to drop it as soon as you're in range. With pallet vacuum, however, if you were to press the drop button from out of range, instead of queuing it, it would instantly teleport the survivor to the far side of the pallet and drop it at the same time. Now, Which survivors being able to literally teleport does sound absolutely crazy, and that's because it absolutely was. Just like how crazy it is that nearly 85% of people watching this aren't subscribed. If you if you haven't, you should do that now because we're watching somebody else's video, so you should do that or else you're a big jerk and I hate you. Do it. If you're enjoying this, don't forget to subscribe as there's loads more videos just like this on my channel. So, pair pallet teleportation with a ludicrous amount of safe pallets and matches were already frustrating for killers even when people were playing fairly. But bully squads had one issue with this. Even with lots of pallets and the ability to literally teleport when dropping pallets, just pallets are totally finite. So that means it would be possible for killers to actually win the game, eventually, if they dropped all the pallets. <laughs> and we can't have that now, can we? Luckily for them, there were bugs in the game that solved that problem. Oh, good for them. Introducing infinite loops. Loops that were, as the name implies, infinite. Meaning that no matter how long the match goes on for, if a survivor runs that loop, they would never die. How infinite loops would work was typically by having a really good window on a long loop with line of sight blockers. Mm -hmm. Bloodlust originally wasn't even a thing in the game, but it was added later in an attempt to get rid of infinite loops. However, due to the loops being long and having line of sight blockers, the survivor could continue running the loop while not being in the killer's line of sight, and that would in turn register as them no longer being in chase. And they've removed most of these from the game, but like, there are still some instances of loops where like, you will break line of sight and reset bloodlust. So it's just like, even after all the things they've done to try and remove this, they've removed a lot of it, but there's still instances of that happening. There's like, like that one loop that they just, on new shelter with that, with that really, really long uh, vault through the tent. That you break, you break line of sight while looping that, depending on how you guys approach it for the initial chase. Like they still have, they still have stuff like this in the game. It's just not as egregious as it used to be. Thus preventing bloodlust gain. The strong window would offset any distance the killer gained on the survivor, and due to the loop being long, the window wouldn't get blocked as too much time had occurred since the previous vault. Again, due to the loops being very long, it was pretty much impossible for killers to mind game or counter rotate any of them. While the explanation may make infinite loops sound super complicated, functionally it was as simple as running any other standard window loop. Some of you may be thinking of an obvious solution. If a survivor were to run an infinite loop, drop chase with them and go for someone else. And in the case of a lone survivor using infinite loops in a normal public match, that would work just fine. But, if but four in man the case knows, of yeah. squads, all four of them would be aware of the infinite loop and would happily use it. So switching targets would achieve nothing. While infinite loops were effectively god mode, that still wasn't enough for some people. 
While the killer would never be able to win the match against a full team using infinite loops, the killer could still play, which, of course, was absolutely unacceptable. <laughs> so, depending on the map, bully squads would resort to abusing a bug that allowed survivors to outright disable the killer's ability to move and would have the killer trapped in one spot indefinitely. We had a last patch, there was that bug that comes back every once in a while where if you, uh, if you pallet drop the, um, if you pallet drop the Eerie of Crow Shack pallet, and you stun a killer, sometimes they'll get stuck inside of it. I had somebody offering me to Eerie of Crows, and then go straight to Shaq, stun me, and I got stuck inside of it, and they swore. They swore they had no idea. Yeah, they swore they had no clue. And I was like, uh-huh, sure. Sure, you just brought me to this map where this glitch exists, and you go straight- Our first loop, you go out of your way to go straight to that pallet. Sure. The bug was patched, after years, but how it worked was by having a survivor stood underneath a hole, not an open drop like a hill, specifically a hole, and then getting a killer to drop down said hole. This would typically be done by having one person waiting there already, then having somebody else in chase bring the killer to said hole. The person in chase would drop down the hole and wouldn't get stuck. Then the killer would drop down in pursuit and would instead find themselves stuck on top of the first survivor's head, <laughs> That's really completely funny. unable to move. Back in the day, I personally had a bully squad use this glitch on me in the original Crota's Prenna Scythen map, which, at the time, was home to the easiest infinite loop in DBD mm -hmm. in the main building. This building always been dumb. hostage for 15 minutes and repaired an astounding two generators in that time, most likely because they expected the killer to leave the match instead of sticking around. After 15 minutes, I assume they got bored because they let me go, but other people at the time wouldn't be let go quite as quickly with some people being held hostage for 30 minutes or even hours if they didn't quit. Yeah, because there to was no, the movement -based like, stuff, the game shuts down hard bounce glitches. back then. Very similar to the COD 4 bounce glitches from back in the day, Dead Hard bounces were achieved with the old Dead Hard's dash as it applied a tremendous amount of acceleration. So, by dead harding off of an edge and hitting another edge at the right angle, it would then in turn bounce the survivor upwards and allow them to land on other objects. That's Depending hilarious. Depending on the map, location, and what object the survivor landed on, it could render the survivor totally unkillable as they'd simply be too high up for killers to reach. This of course meant that it was another tool bully squads could use to become completely unkillable or even hold the game hostage. In the interest of fairness, I think it is important to note that the dead hard bounce glitches were nowhere near as common as a lot of the other stuff on this list, as the glitches weren't in many maps. That, that's and true, but like, you know, whenever you got somebody, you could map offering to those maps, and like, people, it, that, this is something, this is an argument, not that I'm saying that our death is making this argument, but this is an argument I see a lot when I'm talking about balance in the game, and a lot of my videos, is like, well, will a four-man really actually abuse that? Or, hey, does it, is it really common that a four-man actually abuses it? Like, does it matter if it's common, if it's completely unfair and, and ruins the fun of the game? Does it really matter the frequency at which it happens if it's just shit for everyone? <laughs> like, like why, is that, why is that a take? Oh, well, it doesn't really happen that often, so we should just keep it. It's like, well, it, in the instances that it does happen, yeah, it's terrible. The old Hanfield porch glitch, yeah, we could just, like, phase through the porch using Dead Heart. I remember that. Not as many people knew about them. While everything I just mentioned were powerful tools in the arsenal of a bully squad capable of making any match completely unwinnable, those weren't the things that built bully squads such an infamous reputation. Instead of abusing infinite loops and bugs, it was instead the mechanics that were intentionally added into the game by behavior that stung the worst. Let's start off with the most famous, or I guess infamous, Insta Blinds. Yep, the Insta -blind all video flashlights on this. did exactly what you'd expect they'd blind the killer instantly. While nowadays you're pretty much only ever blinding the killer if they're stuck in an animation, like breaking a pallet or picking yep, up a survivor, here it is. with We're insta Kote blinds, suffered. it was fast enough that a survivor could flick it at the killer mid-chase and immediately get results. Since insta blinds made it so you wouldn't need to turn that the flashlight on eyes. for as long, they also acted as battery add-ons since it would use like half as much juice for each blind, which also meant they wouldn't run out quickly and it would be a nuisance the killer would have to deal with all match long. It wasn't just an annoyance thing either, it severely shifted the balance of the match even further in the survivor's favor as it completely removed all timing needed for flashlight saves, and positioning too for that matter. 
As soon as the killer finished picking up the survivor, one click of the beamer and boom, the victim is saved. Even back in those days, good killer players knew to face a wall whenever picking up a survivor to counter flashlight saves. But with bully squads, that was simply not an option, as when a survivor knew they were about to go down, they would run out into the open to ensure there were no walls nearby for the killer to protect themselves is with. This the real? Was almost Why does he keep whiffing? Bully squads would run multiple insta blinds and would spam the living daylights out of the killer almost non-stop all match long, and there really wasn't much the killer could do about it. Franklin's demise didn't exist back then, and yep. Lightborn wasn't like how it is nowadays. It didn't make the killer unblindable and instead just made it take 60% longer to blind them, with the added downside of making the hey, killer's Tess, vision good? permanently darker. And that was Hopefully really well. not viable for a reason I'll get into later. There's a lot to say about Instablind flashlights, but I won't go into too much detail as I already made an entire video dedicated to them, where a team of survivors bullied the game director for DBD yep. so hard that Instablinds got completely removed within a month. Mm -hmm. The match was absolute torment. I'll link that video in the description. Next up, the old version of the brand new part. Even nowadays, brand new parts are ridiculously powerful. Being able to repair 15% of a gen in a ridiculously short time and parts are still stupid. with the base toolbox itself is a huge boost to your objective pressure. But back in the old days of DVD, it was a little bit better. First of all, it didn't require any skill checks to use. You just right clicked a gen and the brand new parts effect would instantly activate, which of course is strong as the killer couldn't interrupt it. Yep. But additionally, instead of repairing 15% of a gen, it was 100% of a gen. That's right, with a single Thanks, button press, that. an entire generator you. would Hope be completed well. instantly, and there was literally nothing killers could do about it. It couldn't be interrupted, there was no Franklin's demise, there was no corrupt intervention, it was physically impossible to prevent it. And of course, as it was simply an add-on for toolboxes, all four survivors could use it, which did of course mean that if a full team had brand new parts, the killer could lose four gens within only a few seconds of the match starting. Wonderful While instantly balance. losing 80% of your objectives as soon as the game starts is certainly a sting that would sour the mood of anybody wanting a fair and fun match, it would also mean that the match, and therefore your torment, would be over quickly and then you could go ahead to the next game. So Bully Squads devised a new plan. You imagine that? You imagine that like, hey, it, the match was at least you got away from my suffering as quick as possible. That's that's not enough. You must suffer more. Like it's like it's almost like the people that like specifically load up on like night and skull merchant nowadays specifically to have a 32 minute match. Like stop it. <laughs> Quit it. Like like why? Why nobody wants to be in matches for egregiously long periods of time. Nobody wants to do that. So stop making people suffer on purpose and making it happen, please. Been a rough day. Here's some validation. Tess, you have an incredibly wonderful personality. I appreciate you. Unless you're hiding it. Uh, if you're if you're actually a miserable, nasty person, you're hiding it really well. We have a very fantastic personality. I always enjoy your presence. Imagine I was there! I was there when it was written, says Noodle. I was there when it was written. And instead focused on causing as much misery as possible. First of all, if the entire team used brand new parts, that means they wouldn't have any room for Instablind flashlights. And Instablind flashlights were very high on their priority list due to how frustrating they were and how long they lasted. So if they weren't running four Instablinds, they'd use one brand new part. Instead of using it at the start of the game like previously mentioned, they'd save it for the very last gen. But they wouldn't just use it as soon as there was one gen remaining. They would instead opt to drag things out for as as long as possible, abusing infinite loops, spamming insta blinds, insta healing, abusing certain perks which I'll get into later, teabagging, the whole lot. And if somehow, by some miracle, the killer began to get some pressure and it started looking like the match was playable, just boom, complete the gen instantly. Brand new part on the final gen, and <laughs> all of that pressure instantly meant nothing as the game was now over. So they were dumb. giving the killer some hope just to snatch it all away and cause as much tilt as possible. But that final gen being instantly repaired would not be the final kick in the balls as there was still more to come. I'll explain later in the video. Continuing the trend of broken items and add-ons, we have insta heals. Plural. Yep, yep. That's right. This is what there were two about. different insta heal add-ons. 
the anti-hemorrhagic syringe, and the styptic agent. Well, these are still really While strong. most people still refer Just weaker, to the but syringe still as an insta-heal nowadays, it instead functions as an auto-heal, which is what I call it. You apply it with the skill check button, and then you're free to walk, sprint, vault, do gens, etc. And after 16 seconds, you heal up one health state. I think you can all see where this is going. Mm -hmm. Let's take the old styptic agent for example. When you press the skill check button to use it, there was no 16 second wait. The moment you press that button, you were instantly healed of full health state. So from injured to full health or from downed to injured. So what did the syringe do then? Again, the moment oh, you hey, press the brother. button, yeah. you were instantly I'll healed, well, but for two health states. With That's a so single dumb. button press, you could take a down survivor to full health. Again, no 16 second delay, it was the instant you pressed that button. This, of course, meant that if the killer managed to get an injury, it was fun back in the, day, the survivor would Maya? immediately drop a pallet. It was fun. For whom? To the other side, For whom is the question? the heal in the killer's face, teabag a couple times, and then continue with their antics. Even if the bully squad made some severe mistakes and the killer got a sliver of pressure, all of that pressure would instantly be reset with mm -hmm. the use of an insta heal. And again, Believer. there was nothing the killer could do about it. Sloppy Butcher didn't have any effect, there was no Franklin's demise, it was simply unavoidable. Now, although the effect of an insta heal was ungodly powerful, it was only a one time use. So even still, it was not as popular as the previously mentioned insta blind flashlights. Insta heals were definitely far more popular than brand new parts though, as it was far easier to heal in a killer's Very face like a than it was to use yeah. a brand new part in the killer's face. Because once again, the goal for bully squads was often not winning, but bullying the killer as much as possible. And yeah, and that's true, up, and that's why I find it so funny that people are like, you should never complain about this game's balance ever, because it was people like complaining about all this stuff. It eventually got it changed, right? Like, it was people always pushing that envelope, trying to get things fixed and adjusted for the better. That actually caused these changes to go through. So, like, you know, if people just never complained ever, which is a lot of people's feelings about Dead by Daylight, it's just like, never complain about anything ever. If you complain at all, you're whiny and you're just, you're just entitled. Like, if you ever complain about anything ever, like, there's not really this kind of, like, public push to have a lot of the stupid stuff that exists in the game changed. And if we had never complained ever, we would still have stuff like this in the game like we would still have stuff like this that is just absolutely miserable to face still in the game if we never made any of these complaints so it's just like i just don't get that mindset that a lot of people have it just seems like a your your emotionalness bothers me so i want you to shut up it doesn't seem like it's actually like actually a good take it's just like you being you having an, an, an aggressive emotion bothers me so please stop that's what it is if or it feels like the broken items and add-ons we have the old keys yep. nowadays keys aren't particularly valuable on the rare Thank occasion you see anyone using it it's just to see the auras of other players but in the past keys were one of the strongest items in the game mm -hmm. even without any add-ons this was because paired with the old hatch mechanics survivors could escape the match early without even doing all the gens and it wasn't restricted to just the last survivor alive yeah either. it could be everybody you see in the past the hatch would spawn even when multiple survivors were alive and even if there were still gens left to repair yep. but it wouldn't be open the formula worked like this the hatch yeah well, why do you hate keys jason you don't like having a survivor team just like totally screw up their gen spacing at three gen themselves and just king out the end you don't like them making a mistake and then just le all leaving anyway? You don't like them losing and then just... Nope, I, reverse Uno, Uno reverse card, I actually win. You don't like that? Come on now. That was fun, right? That was fun. It was so fun. Match would spawn if one gen was done, plus one more gen for each alive survivor. So, two alive survivors required three gens to be complete. Three survivors required four gens to be complete, and so on. So, by bringing in a purple or red key, survivors could escape without even completing the Without even objective. winning, yep. That's right, they could win without winning. Similar to the brand new part situation, keys could be used to snatch away the killer's last hope. But, once again, winning wasn't really the goal, so most bully squads would prefer to bring in more insta-blinds. Now let's get into the meat of the bully squad's arsenal the perks mm -hmm. in the past the perk meta was incredibly stale and remained the same for years at a time 
there was one single build for survivors that was incredibly unfair as it covered every possible situation all in one and provided a second chance for every single one of those situations. The build was Decisive Strike, mm -hmm. Borrow Time, Unbreakable, yep. and Dead Hard. Well, PP While build. you may be familiar with all of those perks and how they function today, in the past they were different and far, far stronger. With the exception of Unbreakable... I would run into like three or four man squads of that and oh my god. They were, they were some of the least fun matches I've ever had in the history of this game. Like, like I have some really, really unfun games nowadays with like people like greeting agenda last second and sprint bursting away and you know, bringing in like prove hyper focus, all that stuff. But like, nothing will ever, ever, ever be as annoying as facing a four or three man running these four perks. Like, oh my god, it was the worst and nastiest thing. And yeah, and Toto's right. It's like they don't even have to be in comms. Like, just like three or four people. Period. Bringing this build, even without coordination, was so incredibly strong. Can't tunnel. Yes. Um. Can't go after the guy that came off hook at all for basically any reason because BT. Uh, you can't slug because it's unbreakable, and you can't chase because dead hard. Like you, you, it's just that you're not allowed to do anything. Build. It, it's a you're not allowed to do anything. Build. It's. It was dumb. Which functioned the same as it does nowadays, but with slightly different numbers. These perks were so ungodly overpowered and or hated in the past that I've already made dedicated videos for each individual yep. perk yep. with the exception of unbreakable as once again it hasn't really changed much so what exactly made this build so overpowered and also why did it Apple. become the default build for bully squads for the you? first time i ever played the game was the ptb for pyramid Head. first time i ever played the game so yeah we all started around there then yeah that was i that was the last time i ever considered quitting like actually quitting the game like seriously like not just i'm really annoyed with these perks and I re are really annoyed at the meta right now. Like I, I, like I actually like considered not playing this game ever again. Was during the height of these four perks being the meta. I was like, I'm literally just not having fun most of my games because people just nonstop run this and it never ends. So, yeah, that like legitimately was the last time I actually like thoroughly like and seriously considered quitting. Is to come. Well, each of these perks would completely nullify whatever the killer tried to do, effectively resetting all of the killer's pressure whenever they were used. Here's how a match would go with this build. Killer hits the survivor once, survivor dead hards the second hit, killer hits them a third time and then the survivor goes down. As soon as the survivor gets put on the killer's shoulder, boom, an instant decisive strike, mm -hmm. which used to be permanently active no matter what for yep. a single use. And I would have people DSing me off of gens, DSing me off of hook saves, like literally DS was just quite literally free invincibility on top of dead hard, which already gave you invincibility and chase. So you couldn't, you couldn't pick up invincibility but you can't chase because invincibility. And you can't slug because I can get right back up. It's just ridiculous. It was just stupid. And have a longer stun, which would then free the survivor and reset the chase again. And that entire chase achieved absolutely nothing for the killer. That's right, if all four survivors had decisive strike back then, which was very common even in matches that weren't against yep, early squads, yep, we that meant it. all survivors would get a guaranteed proc on their first down whether they had been hooked or not. And it didn't even matter if they were the obsession or not originally. Mm -hmm. Okay, so if picking up survivors gets you hit with decisive strike, then you must be better off downing a survivor and leaving them slugged, right? Nope. Nope. Unbreakable. Because then they'd be able to revive themselves with unbreakable and reset everything once again. Okay, so you get through the dead hard, you've taken the decisive strike, and then you've downed the same survivor a second time. So you finally get to hook them. Oh look, the survivor's teammate has immediately rushed for the unhook. That's fine. If they unhook in front of the killer, then that will end up being a trade. Nope, because old time, time used to would apply, apply to, both. to both the unhooked mm -hmm. person and the person unhooking them. So Stupid. they're instantly unhooked, resetting any pressure you would have from having someone immobilized, and the unhooker doesn't get traded either. So once again, another full pressure reset. As you could imagine, dealing with that build as killer was incredibly frustrating. No matter what you did, you were going to get punished for it whether you made the right play or not. And that's just if you were playing any random match against someone with that meta build. 
Now, if you were to take the same meta build and apply it to all four members of a bully squad, that meant that alongside more pallets, pallet teleporting, infinite loops, hostage taking, insta blinds, insta heals, teabagging, and faster mm. base gen speeds, you'd also have anything you did completely nullified one time per survivor. And believe me, Thanks we are not well, done yet. Remember sorry, earlier when I said restful. Lightborn's darkened screen was just not an option for killers in terms of dealing with insta blinds? That's because not only were maps darker in general back in those days, there were also extra offerings called moonlight offerings, mm -hmm. which could either brighten or darken the map significantly. And I really do mean significantly. It was so frustrating just to be in a match with the darkest moonlight offering as it was so hard to spot any survivor. Yeah, I want to say that. I want to I want to I want to comment on that real quick. Uh Reaper. Uh True Talent saying the survivor is the easiest it's ever been. Uh Survivor is the most nerfed it's ever been in the history of the game compared to literally all of this stuff that we've been watching so far. You're telling me Survivor is the easiest it's ever been. What what have we watched for 21 minutes? Have you seen all this stuff? Like, I know that his whole deal is, like, you know, saying off-the-wall stuff, which gets him a lot of attention. But, like, fa fact factually just completely off-the-wall and completely incorrect. Just with all the things we've watched so far, and the video's not even done. Factually incorrect. Across the board. Just completely factually incorrect. How do, how do you have that opinion? Like, I just don't get it. Disable in customs? I know. I wish we could still use them in customs. You know, like, all the items that are gone, like, I wish you could just still use them in customs, like, for fun. I mean, you could say that for killer, too. I would say players in the game, period. If you t if you phrase it that way, like, skill in the game? The, the game is the least skillful, I feel like it's, like, I feel like, yeah, I feel like there's a lot of cheat. I mean, even then, no, because, like, brand new, old brand new parts, you just got on a gen and just, like, without even skill checks, you just finished? No, no, even then, that's not true. Yeah, even then, that's not true. I get what he's saying, because, like, life doesn't take skill. Sprint burst doesn't take skill, and, like, that sort of thing. Prove doesn't take skill. But, like, no, like, uh, old BMBs were definitely worse and, 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 and definitely less skillful. Old Dead Hard, much less skillful. Old DS, way less, you know, like, basically everything. Every old version of the perk or playstyle was stronger back in the day and way less skill intensive. So, like, yeah... Yeah, that's just, that's just not true. <laughs> this video is evidence. And, of course, the darkest moonlight offering could also be paired with the thickest fog offering to make things even worse. Do you know how hard it is to deal with a survivor you can't even see abusing an infinite loop? Because old school killers do, and it is not fun to say the least. The last in-game tactic worth mentioning was the old school sabotage squads and 99%ing hooks. In the mm -hmm. past, hook sabotaging worked slightly differently to how it does now. In the present day, if you let go of the sabotage button before it's complete, then all progress is lost. But in the past, the progress would simply pause. Oh, which is dumb. While it did take a oh, bit dumb. longer to sabotage hooks in the past, what survivors could do is preemptively set up all the hooks on the map to be 99% sabotage and then simply instantly finish it if the killer was about to hook someone on it. This was once again. And once again, and what happens if you slug them? Unbreakable, because you know what? They're all running. DS Unbreakable Dead Army. <laughs> Another case of giving killers hope and then <laughs> swiping it away from them at the last minute. And again, there was no Franklin's demise, so there wasn't anything the killer could really do about it. I've already mentioned that Bully Squads didn't really have much interest in winning, instead, often opting to let the killer win. While part of the reason for this was because they already had their fun in bullying and tormenting the killer for the entire match and that was all they really cared about, there was also another reason many opted to lose, and that was to derank. DBD's old matchmaking system was even more laughable than the one it has nowadays. In they, the past, yeah, they're, ranks they're would go from bad. 20, being the lowest, what a fresh account would start on, to rank 1, where the people who played the game most often would be. So, if someone was to be at a lower rank, they would often face new players, and a survivor dying was often enough to count as a loss and therefore a D-rank. Once again, I'm sure you can see where this is going. Yep. For some of these bully squads, infinite loops, 4 second chance perks, glitches, etc, etc were still not enough. They still felt the need to de-rank in order to torment new players. So disgusting. And this absolutely did stop people from sticking with DBD for the long run. 
And I know this because in the comments of my other videos covering some of these individual perks and items, people talk about how they wanted to get into DBD, ended up playing against some of this ridiculous stuff, had zero fun, and subsequently never played the game again. And this is why this is important, right? This is why we talk about balance all the time, because like, not only is this like, you know, annoying us on the like the 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 like the experience the veteran players end of things like imagine a new player running against uh, a skull merchant in a 30 minute match they're they're gonna be like oh i didn't know this was like i didn't know this was like a like a moba or something where the matches are this long and they and they're like oh well no that's just the, the way that character played and they're just gonna be like oh oh okay Oh. Yeah, it's just, it's just like it's just stuff like that. It's like like a new player player comes into that and they're just like, "Oh. Oh, that's kind of that kind of that's, that's kind of terrible." Like like in it, it, it's even worse because like especially with like skill-based matchmaking, escaping is all that cranks your MMR, right? Like you could play incredibly well, but as long as you die, you go down. So realistically, a lot of a lot of people, you know, like the matchmaking is a very a very accurate um so you imagine like having a fairly new player run into like somebody with like triple quad slowdown like it's just like what like oh god like they, they run into that and they're just like um i don't i don't really want to play anymore <laughs> right just like just like back in the day you'd run into like you know a four-man team running old dead hard ds unbreakable and they'd just be like I, that kind of sucked. I kind of had a miserable time. I don't really want to play anymore. So that's why, like, conversations about balance and that sort of thing are always going to be important. Is because, like, just as much as it is to keep the veteran players happy and still, you know, playing the game and ergo still buying skins and financially supporting the game, it's also to keep new players from dropping the game. Like, that's that's a big thing I harp on a lot, too. Uh, especially, especially with DBD. It's because you look at, like... It's like, if you look, like, DBD has... Consistently had a problem retaining new players. Like if you look, if you come down here, like if if we go to Steam charts, if we look at like when um we had uh the first Resident Evil chapter, right, with like Nemesis and stuff, and that was like a huge deal, right? That was a huge deal. Um, they had their like all time peak of like a hundred and five thousand people, but like as of seventeen minutes ago, there's only twenty five thousand people playing. <laughs> like, they didn't retain this at all. Like, even if you look at their 24-hour peak, 38,000 people? Look at how many people they didn't retain from that, right? Those people aren't still playing the game. <laughs> even, it, like, you could keep injecting the game with, like, big IP chapter, big IP chapter. 105 with Stranger Things? I do not think so. I do not think so. I do not think, because even when it was Stranger Things, the game wasn't that popular. No, I mean, it was a huge chapter, and it gave them a lot of players, but I don't think they hit their 105 peak in Stranger Things. I could be wrong on that. But, like, the game used to be way smaller back in the day, even when Stranger Things released. Yeah, Nemesis Nemesis, and Resident Evil was, like, the big, like, the big, big thing that they got that was, like, wow. But, like, they didn't retain those players. Like, people play, people play this game, and they're, like... Well, that wasn't very fun. I'm quitting. <laughs> right? Which is why, like, the ASIM is, like, one of the fun parts about the game. But, like, if you have too many outliers and you have too 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 many things that are way too unfair, people just end up quitting the game. Right? And they don't come back. It, it, it's really sad to see this and then have their, like, their numbers currently in current day just be so low comparatively. Like, they, like, DBD historically has a hard time retaining their player base. But that's, like, why like paying attention to this stuff as closely as we do is important because you know we want more players to be retained again so circling back to what i said at the start of the video i'm sure you can now see why some people absolutely do not think dbd used to be so much more fun in the past than it is nowadays but that doesn't mean everyone who misses the old days was just a bully that spent every match harassing killers in the past playing survivor was an absolute power trip and mm -hmm. every now and then it's nice to let loose like getting a hero on star wars and, and, and this is like this is like why killers are super happy nowadays right and like why they don't want things to be adjusted even though they you know perhaps things are unfair because survivors were the power trip for such a long time so killers that played back then some of them some of them are like happy 
Like, a lot of people that were, like, really, really frustrated that Eruption got nerfed were like, well, they had busted stuff for so long, why can't I have it? Which is, like, totally hypocritical, right? Like, that's totally dumb and hypocritical. They weren't fundamentally against things being broken in the game. They were fundamentally against somebody else having it. They want to be the power trip. And I guarantee you that if they got their way and the, the one in the 1v4 got to be the power trip, people would just quit this game and the game would die. Swapping which role has the power trip is not healthy for the game. The game wasn't healthy when one role had the power trip. Much, much less so if the role that's literally less populous in the game, like there's less of them, becomes the power trip. That's not going to be good for the health of the game. I can't believe I have to say this. Like... I can't believe I have to say this. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying this to like, you know, exaggerate for content purposes or to like, you know, make this be funny because I'm having such a zany reaction. I legitimately do not understand how some of you say that killers deserve to be the power trip now. I really don't get you. Unironically, think that's going to be healthy for you. Think that's going to work out. You unironically think that's going to work out. You think having things like on the same power level is insta blinds or old dead heart or old ds unbreakable combo you think having all that on killer is going to be good for the health of the game do you remember how miserable you were facing those things do you remember how unfun the game was for you and you think you suddenly having the power trip is going to be healthy for the game do you remember how unhealthy the game was when you were enduring all those things like it's just like a complete disconnect it's it's so stupid it's so dumb yeah, it's more, like exactly, Noodle. It's like we're we're trying to stabilize the game. It's not the point of like who who, ha who switching the side that has the busted stuff. And the fact that some of you want that is just so asinine. Like, how do you think that? You are so weird if you think that. So strange. Like, I. I it, it's not ironic. Like they they mean it with their whole chest. It's not like a meme or like they mean it. They're like, yeah. Let's just introduce a bunch of buses stuff on Killer and keep it. Let's just make us the power trip. Like, I just... I don't get that. I really don't. I don't know. Maybe it's just, you know... YouTube is a wild place where people say a lot of really wild off-the-wall things, and it's, like, strange. Um, but I just... Even in the sense of just, like, the zaniness of the online world, I don't know how people unironically want this power trippy stuff back in the game, but just on their side. I don't get that. I really don't. Battlefront 2. And in the end, things were much more simple and casual back then, and people do have a reason to miss that. So, what caused the downfall of Bully Squad and why don't we see them anymore? Well, to put it simply, balance changes and bug fixes. Infinite loops got patched, the hostage taking glitches got patched, dead hard bounce glitches got patched, the perks got nerfed, maps got changed, and the moonlight offerings got removed. Although it did take far too long, literally mm -hmm. years, these ridiculous things did eventually get easy. patched. And once again, the game might not be perfect now, so but it is so much fairer than it used to be. And would you believe that back then, people were adamant that killers were OP and that the devs quote unquote babied killers? I remember hearing that. I remember hearing that all the time. 2020 DVD, I would hear that. I would I would 4K somebody despite all this stuff, and they would be like, oh, they keep giving you stuff. There's almost a two-hour video that that will be out by the time that the uh, you know not today because not at time of recording, but there'll be there's a video that's coming out. They'll be out by the time I this is out on the YouTube, which is almost a two-hour video of somebody going on a rant about how the killer just is so like they like you know they, from their perspective, Bavier does baby the killers and give them everything, and it's just like. I don't see that. I really don't see that. Like, back in that day, everything was survivor sided. Like, almost everything. Yeah, like, there was, like, old ruin and dying and stuff like that. But they patched that fairly. Like, there was like, that only lasted, lasted in the game for, like, a few months. And they got rid of it. That, that, there, old ruin and dying. And that was something that at least you could get rid of, right? You could at least get rid of <laughs> old ruin and dying eventually. Um, so at least that had some form of counterplay. Um, 
And then there was, uh, especially Rune Undying after the adjustment, where Undying couldn't spawn it infinitely. Like, that was honestly, like, way better than what we have now. Or way more fair than what we have now. You know? Way more fair than what we have now. I would take, like, Pop Corrupt over, like, anything that we have now in terms of, like, perks. I think Pop Corrupt was, you know... Those were good perks back in the day that, you know, you had to earn them, right? Or, like, get value out of them. If you if you brought Corrupt Intervention, old Corrupt Intervention, you chased them through your Corrupt, it was essentially a wasted perk. You had to use it correctly. Pop, you obviously had to hook somebody to even earn it. Um, old, uh, new Ruin Undying, before it got nerfed, um, after Undying no longer respawned every single totem, um, that was pretty good, because at least you could get rid of it. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, I don't know. I just don't understand how people think they babied killers back in the day. I really don't get it. I don't get it. But, you know, I don't, I've don't. i always been one of those people that, like, I, you know, I didn't play during some of this. Um, like, I never experienced, like, BT protecting both people. I've had to watch that. Um, but I was around for, like, Dead Hard DS, BT, and all that wonderful stuff. Um... And I don't know. I don't know how anybody could ever say the old DVD was fun. I think that, like, like Ardetha said, I feel like if I played in a... Like, I was fairly new to the community. I didn't run in four-man groups. I feel like if I ran in a four-man group and I knew... And I ran with those people and I ran the kind of perks that I did, yeah, I'd probably think DB was fun. Yeah, because I was just, like, kicking people's... You know, I was kicking people's shit in. You know, I wasn't actually, like... With very little skill, I could just completely dominate the game. Like, of course I would think that was fun. Right? But I primarily played killer back then, so I was just kind of like, this sucks. This sucks. And whenever I play Survivor, mostly, like, Survivor Fridays was not a thing uh, when I first started streaming. Like, I just, if I was playing Survivor, I was playing by myself. And solo queue has been terrible forever, even if you ran good perks. So, like, it was just miserable. It was just kind of miserable. So if I was playing killer or solo queue, the game was just kind of not fun to play back in the day. I played it a lot still anyways because, like, I like horror things. That's just me. Like, obviously, like, you know, got all the horror stuff in the background. I got right by where I'm pointing. I have my Halloween 2018 Blu-ray. I have uh, The Crow, which is kind of, like, not really a horror movie, but it's like a reverse horror movie where the good guy is the killer. Um, Friday the 13th box set. I know it's kind of shining. Um, AVP box set over here. I have the, the Halloween tapestry over here of the original. Like, I have, like... I love horror a lot, so, like, I kept playing the game because it was kind of, like, the only way for me to, like, kind of experience, like, this genre that I've been into my whole life in, like, a playable fashion that wasn't just, like, a, a, a streamlined single-player experience that had a finite end. Like, I could play this game theoretically forever um, if I wanted to, you know? So that's what kept me playing, but it wasn't because the gameplay was fun. The gameplay was miserable. I hated it. <laughs> um, so I definitely prefer more like the, even the stuff that i hate about modern dvd i would not want to go back there right i would not want to go back to where i've been do you understand why people would want to intentionally bully killer experiment your time because people people have fun at the expense of other people that's just what like like it doesn't make sense to you because you're a a, a kind person with empathy like some people are just losers like there's no way they put it some people are just lame some people are losers some people only have fun at the expense of other people like, there's, there's, there, for some reason, people grow into adults, and some of them keep this, like, ha ha, stupid playground mentality that they had when they were kids. Some of them were bullies. Or some of them, you know, were bullied, so now online they can bully other people. Some people are just losers. Some people just suck. And DVD was a game where they could bully people. Simple as that. Simple as that. Yeah. Whew. That, uh, I'm definitely not <laughs> posing thoughts. I, I would, as somebody who played through some of this, not all of it, but through some of this, like, I would never go back there. I would never go back there. And as some of you have already said, um, some of you guys that started getting into the game, like, say, like, the Sonico chapter or, like, the Nemesis chapter, like, you guys, like, I'm glad you got to play the game at the time you have. I'm glad you, I'm glad you never had to experience some of the stuff that I've had to gone through with this game. I'm glad you never had to deal with, like, the old perks and the way they were. And stuff like that. I'm glad you haven't didn't have to deal with some of the old maps in the way they were. I'm glad that you, I'm glad you could just vibe and enjoy the game without having to run into the stuff. And I'm very happy that that has been your experience. Very happy for that. 
me, I would definitely never go back. Yeah, I'm glad. I'm glad you guys got to experience a a, a more um a more balanced version of the game where a lot of these outliers have been taken out because you know <laughs> it was not great. I gotta hit the twins. There's nowhere to go up. Twins is still probably the worst chapter that has ever been released in this game. Like, the people that had the audacity at how bleak at some points the Skull Merchant chapter was before release, the pe the fact that people had the audacity that said that it was Trench Chapter 2.0, that was... Half of the killers had bugs that were, like, serious bugs. And the twins themselves broke all the time. Like, half the... Like, not half the time. That's an exaggeration. But sometimes I would literally go to pounce on somebody's victory and get stuck in the floor, and there would no, be no way to get out besides just DCing. So your, your, the release killer didn't work. It introduced a slew of bugs for the rest of the killer roster. I'm sure there was stuff bugged on Survivor that I didn't really notice because I was still relatively... Like, I mean, like, from May to, like... What was that? September-ish? Like, that's not actually a long time to be playing the game. Like, I was still probably so new to Survivor, I didn't realize there was a lot of stuff broken on Survivor, too. That was such a buggy, awful chapter. That was still probably the worst chapter to ever released in DBD. Like, what? I, yeah. Huh? Like, uh, huh? Yeah, like, these two... Exactly, Oto. It was like, these two chapters have been boring. They weren't, like, a, 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 a dumpster fire. <laughs> like, the like the twins was, like, a car wreck. <laughs> it was, like, a car accident. It was, like, like burning, flipping, rolling into the fucking game. It was, <laughs> it was terrifying. And if you survived the twins chapter, you are you are entitled to financial benefits. <laughs> you are entitled to financial compensation if you survived the twins chapter, because that was, oh man, that was that was a dumpster fire. That if you survive that, like, I'm happy you're still with us. Accidental highway. Yeah, it was like a twelve car pileup on the interstate. We're all like, can we get can we fix this? And the mid chapter. The mid chapter after was that fun, that fun little chapter where for some reason everybody was decent. So all the killers had three times the lunge You remember that? Like, like literally like use my mouse on screen. Like if say if I was the killer coming from around this cart, I could hit her from right here. I could just swing and hit her from literally right here. I could smack her from here. I had like an extra meter of, of clearance on my swings. There was a killer decent. The fixed chapter they made after that. Like, that mid-chapter, the, the afterwards, that was the desync chapter where you could hit people from super far away. So even the saving grace of, like, oh, hey, they came in and saved the day. There was another horribly awful bug that introduced. Like, that that was a dark... Those were dark times. <laughs> those were dark times, man. That was terrifying. In the UI, yeah, the mobile UI, because they updated the mobile... They, they made the UI, like, a mobile game. It was... Yeah. You're financial, you were entitled to financial compensation if you survived that, uh, that latter half of that year. That was... Bleh. Last two chapters have been stuck in traffic compared to the twins, which was an 18 car pileup. Yep, <laughs> that's, a very, that's a very good way to describe that. Oh my god, that's so funny. <laughs>